Hey everybody, welcome back to the JG Show. It's been a while, but we are back in the ring with Rory. We're gonna be talking to you about UFC 253. Let's do it. All right, welcome on Facebook Live. We're gonna be talking about UFC 252. We don't have much time. We're gonna be doing fight camp soon. We'll try to roll this out in 20, 30 minutes. All right, Rory, take us through. What's the, this card about? Right, so we're back again on Fight Island after the UFC stunt in Vegas. Yes, Good. that's right. Five weeks. Five weeks of Fight Island action. Woo! Maybe next time we do it, we're gonna get the. We're gonna be actually in Fight Island, but as you can see, yeah, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're not yeah, there. Not <laughs> we got two days till the event, so yeah, we'll be flying out soon. Yeah. So straight in this weekend, we've got. Paulo Costa and Israel Adesanya. The, uh, this matchup has been anticipated for at least, what, four months now? Maybe, I think they've been calling each other out for a good year or two. A good year, that's right, because our last Israel Adesanya was against um, Yoel Romero. Yeah, and that was a, a disaster. Fight, yeah. was a shit fight, yeah. The only thing that saved that card was actually the Zhang Wei Li Joanna fight. That was the same card, was That it? was the same card, and that's that was the only thing that saved it, right? Yeah, Jang Joanna was a fucking piece. That was, but. yeah, but, but that fight with, with Yoel and Israel Asanya, that was just him, just, he was just backing off the whole time. They're all just like, they, yeah, were, they were doing just, nothing, right? There was really nothing to speak about with that fight. It was a shit fight. Well, what, what do you predict? What do, Jesus, this fucking live stream is ridiculous. Okay, so what do you predict for um, Israel Asanya and Costa? Are we going to see some action? Are we going to see some... You're going to see action, but I believe that this fight is massively overhyped in Paulo Costa's favor. Okay. If Paulo Costa wasn't built like a fucking brick shit house, mm -hmm. then this fight wouldn't be selling as much. Okay. Adesanya is levels above Paulo Costa. Okay. There's, there's, a, there's a few reasons. I mean, if you look at who Adesanya's fought, like compared uh, to Costa's fought. Yeah, there's loads of ways to look at. But if you look at Adesanya specifically, Adesanya is an elite striker. He's unique. There's nobody, nobody like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a, a elite, gifted individual when it comes to. He's an elite level striker. Yeah, yeah. And. He's rose so fast that if you compare his rise to other people, like for example, Conor McGregor, is like someone that everyone likes speaking about, about how fast they got the title, yeah? Yes, that's right. If you compare Izzy's timeline to Conor McGregor's timeline, in the same space of time, McGregor was just challenging Aldo for the title. Oh, okay. Uh, this is Izzy's second title defense. So you're looking, we might be seeing, we might be seeing uh, Jose Aldo, Conor McGregor kind of an outcome with this coming weekend. I as he's had just as, as long a career and he's miles ahead of McGregor already. Wow, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. very, very true. So, I mean, what would Izzy's strategy be? Would he stay out and then again, just yeah. counter, counter? This fight's tailor-made for Adesanya. Okay. Cost is this huge beast that will just rush in, throw volume, extreme punches. And yeah. Israel sign and move out, take it, that's you know, that's strike. That's what he needs. He yeah, accurate distance, striking, hit his head. Make yeah. Animals, fucking duck in, back out again. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. we're gonna see possibly, I mean, everyone's been saying it, but I believe it too. I reckon this is going to be one of Adesanya's best performances in his career. Best? Oh, wow. Like, he's tailor-made for it. This is exciting. Costa's then. going to walk in. I mean, like, you th think about it. Adesanya's had 80 kickboxing fights before he even came to the UFC. Is it true that Israel Adesanya was based in China before, fighting under like one of the big federations here? Remember, we heard that. for fucking... Was that legend or glory. like... Oh, he I was think, fighting for glory. I think he was fighting for glory, yeah. Well, I can find out right now. So, is, yeah, because I heard um, that actually Israel Asanya was fighting in China before, and they would tell him to take fights and throw them, and he would refuse to. Oh, shit, here's his record right here, yeah? Uh, fuck, he's got fuck a big yeah. record. Glad Glory. Early, oh, okay. But he said, fuck the yeah, first Glory World glory. Series. He, he spent six months in China fighting full time. Six months in China, so that's if that's know. a little fun fact. I you did, yeah, yeah, I, I just that. recently found that out too. So a little fun fact: Israel Asanya, this guy is an absolute legend. He's going to be easily uh, a great in UFC history. Easily, yeah. he really? might even be the, like the next Anderson Silva. Like I mean, he's, he already is. I mean, he's, he, he's not Anderson Silva, but I mean, he's well on his way to. He's well on his way to develop this kind of legacy, right? And, and imagine that he spent six months in China fighting, yeah. and from what. I, I think it was Kunlungjie. It was like up north, you know. Kunlungjie, Kunlung yeah. Uh, that's China's big UFC federation, right? Oh, right. Um, it's run by a guy named uh, Jiang Hua. He's like from a military background. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that, man? We almost fell, but we are still on. See, that's, do not worry. That's what happens when we don't do it regularly, man. We just fuck yeah, up. dude. Fucking camera pushes out and everything. Like, Hold on! Oh. Don't move! Don't fucking move! But. All right. Extreme podcast. Yes. <laughs> Stream shit's flying everywhere. God damn it. But yeah, he fought in for six months and they were telling him to throw fights and he would refuse to. 
Just yeah, yeah. Just say, we'll pay you to, to throw it. And he would say yeah. no, and he'd beat the guy up. I don't know that. Crazy, huh? Yeah. I want to find an interview from him about that because that is, that's an interesting story. He's, how many other UFC fighters that aren't Chinese, obviously, have, have you heard of fighting in China? Because you know the industry just, here. They don't, they don't have, there's no fucking, there's no um, like development in China for that up until recently. Yes. Like China really and the rest of them. Just like, the last, no, let's say, three, four years even, yeah, right? There's no, you wouldn't come, there's no infrastructure for fighters to come through, come here and train and then come up from China. Mm. Chinese fighters would go to Vegas. I mean, I'd go to fucking Brazil or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, this didn't seem like the place, unless you were willing to throw fights. Unless you were really shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. All right, let's, we're going to, you guys research that. Any other, if there's any links or any interviews, you know, post them down in the comments. I'd be interested to know more about Israel Asanya's life in China and how he, who, where he was fighting, who he was fighting. Videos. Some, yeah, I want to see videos. I want to see some, some yeah, I want to hear, hear some gossip, right? Yeah. But yeah. amazing main event for that, this weekend. That said, he's had 80 kickboxing fights. Okay. He's had 19 mixed martial arts fights. And like, do you think he's never seen anyone like Paulo Costa? Yeah. You can see loads of fucking Paulo Costa. He's actually fights. his ideal opponent, right? Someone yeah, who's like, big, not so agile. Someone that he can duck under, throw a strike, you know, yeah, yeah. get points, come back away, throw a leg he's, kick. He's, I reckon he's fought loads of fucking Paulo Costas before, but I guarantee Paulo Costas never fought anyone like Adesanya. Yeah, yeah. You can't find someone like Adesanya in the gym, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And saying that, Paulo Costa has never fought five rounds before. Really? No. That's a f- he's, that's he's, he's only fight. had five fights in the UFC. Really? Against, that's, that's his record. Well, that's but, true. It's, it's, he's a very new up and Oh, he fought Uriah Hall, right? Ooh. Yeah, but still, Uriah Hall's not fucking Adesanya. Yeah, you know I mean? okay. And then he fought uh, Yoel Romero. Yoel Romero, yeah. Adesanya also fought. I mean, his record's... If anything, this fight's too soon for Romero. That's right. Probably it would be better if, if actually, if Costa did take a bit of time, developed yeah, his record I'm a bit. I'm sure he'll have a big record, but I reckon Saturday night is all going to be about Adesanya. I Amazing. It's, it's going to be the fight of the night for sure. Amazing, but yeah. But it's all Adesanya. This is his, his big night fight. Yeah. Wow. That's a, that's a nice little spin on the main event. A lot of people that come in and they, I mean, they want Costa to win. They somehow think like, you know, I mean, he's Costa, got that superhero Costa, status. Costa's you know, he should... got a chance. He's got, he's got a puncher's chance. Mm-hmm. And he's also got the most punches landed per minute in the UFC history above Justin Gaethje. Really? More punches landed yeah. per minute? Per, okay. Per minute. So the most punches landed in UFC history. Okay. Justin landed Gaethje. or like like actual Land, landed. effective strikes? Landed. Yeah. Okay. Landed. Wow, what a so, fun fact, huh? Yeah, so I mean, he's, he's, he's not got no chance. It should be a good fight. And the thing is, the biggest thing about this fight is that they're both undefeated. Adesanya and Costa have both never lost. They've never lost, yes. So that's a different mentality. This is an exciting fight to be coming back to Fight Island, yeah? Yeah, definitely. This, did you see the face-off? It's like right in front of the beach this time. Nah. You had Dana White there and both of them came out and it was, it was right, oh, it was so oh, I beautiful. Didn't, I didn't know they faced off yet. Yeah, yeah, they, I mean, they literally would have just been like maybe an hour ago, right? Given wow. the time differences, right? It's exciting, man. This is I've really exciting. So they've had like, media stuff and face-offs already. Yeah, yeah. so it would, it would be, what's today? Over there? No, right now, it's Thursday night. Somewhere so, because, yeah, because we're not in Vegas, right? We're in a, there in, yeah. we're in a different kind of a time, right? So be, it would be like early afternoon. Early, early afternoon, but it would be Thursday, though, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be Thursday? It wouldn't be, wouldn't be Wednesday. Fuck knows. Yeah. We've got to get I'm better not, on our time. I've forgotten the hour. We're, all, we're, we're on like China-Vegas time all the time, right? <laughs> But yeah, let's talk about the co-main event, which I think is probably maybe a, a little bit more of an entertaining fight, given what you've said, where Israel Asanya will be. I think, don't, don't get me wrong, Adesanya Costa will be incredibly entertaining. Okay. I mean, it's, going to be, it's not going to happen. It's not going to be a quick finish. It's going to take a few rounds, but I reckon when you get to rounds four, rounds five, Adesanya's going to turn it up and just give a fucking masterclass. Really? If, if he manages to knock him out. I reckon Adesanya by points, okay. I reckon you're in for a belt of a fight. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. worried Israel Asanya is going to stay away. Like, he's just not going to risk going, getting, getting, is, checked, getting, like, getting caught. That's from the Romero fight, but you think about the, um, the Gastelum fight, fight of the year. Fight of the year, yeah. His fights against um, Robert Whitaker in Australia. Whitaker was amazing, yeah. Was it was just the Romero fight. That was, okay. And if, if Costa won't stay back, Costa, Costa's actually a terrible fight in his back foot. Mm-hmm. Costa has to go forward. He always goes forward. Mm-hmm. And if he's going forward, I, I'd assign you about right there. So he's going to provide a lot more pressure than Yoel. Yoel, of okay. course, yeah. where it was just, I mean, just they, there was zero pr- pressure there. Just okay, so we're going to see yeah. a lot of forwarding from Costa and we're going to see a lot of countering. From Adesanya. You're going to see a, right. a, master, a master class from Adesanya and Southern Night. Man, this is exciting, yeah? Yeah, you're not even going to be here. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch it on my phone. Yeah. Buy a link, watch it on my phone. So yeah. tell us about the, the Cole main event. The Cole right. main. Well, the light heavyweight division has been dominated by John Jones and Daniel Cormier 
either one of them holding the title since 2011. Now, Daniel Cormier has obviously retired after his heavyweight fight with Stevie Miocic. That's right. John Jones has vacated the light heavyweight title. He's done, he's out, he's going up, he's right? He's going up to heavyweight. Well, so he says, he's not booked anything yet, but he says he's, he's walked away from the title anyway. So for the first time since 2011, um, we're going to have a new lightweight champion. A new lightweight champion. Basically, I mean, and I think that's fair because John Bones Jones did, did that, that fight with Reyes and John, and John Bones Jones. I mean, what, what were your thoughts on that fight? I thought it was a close fight. I mean, at the end of the day, like, either fighter could have won it. I thought Reyes had some great points in the fight, but pff, I wasn't upset that Jones won it. Yeah, that's right. I, I'm exactly the same. I, don't, I think Reyes, in order to beat someone like John Bones Jones, I think it had to be a little bit yeah, more... To be, I mean, people call him for a rematch. To be obvious. But John Jones has got nothing to prove to anyone. He doesn't, yeah. have, he doesn't have to beat Dominic Reyes again to be the best ever. Yeah, yeah. he so, probably was the, the toughest challenge for John Bones Jones, but it wasn't like... Let's, it wasn't a win. It wasn't a win. Nah, win is it's could, a bit much. That, that's one of the things that people are saying that Reyes coming into this fight with uh, Blakovic. Reyes has got all these people running about him saying that you beat John Jones, you won that fight. If he's coming in here too confident, he's going to get knocked out. Mm, okay. Do you know what I mean? But however, that said, I think Reyes is the most skilled fighter. I think he's got a better resume. He's fresher and he's got a point to prove now against Jan Blakovic. Jan Blakovic. Jan Blakovic. What's his? What was his last fight before this? The last fight was Corey Anderson. Corey Anderson. Uh, the most, and to be honest, Blakovic for me is the names flew under the radar, but he's always been like there, there about, it's a couple of fight, fight nights, things like How that. How did he get this fight though? This is a title shot though. Whoever yeah, wins gets so the title. He's won the last three. He's 26 wins, eight losses. In the okay. Um, Does he deserve a freaking yeah, title for sure. shot? for sure. I mean, there's the, the, the top five in the light, light heavyweight division. I mean, I reckon the title's gonna move, move quite a lot in the light heavyweight division. Hmm. Whoever wins this fight will probably lose it early next year. Okay. will jump about, you know what I mean? Okay, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, We're not gonna get a dominant fighter like John Bones Jones, no. arguably. But I mean, I think Reyes has got this one. He's 12 and one. He's only lost being to John Jones. Yeah. And as long as he comes in taking this fight seriously, he should come away and start with a victory. Yeah, he's an inter entertaining fighter too. He pushes for, he, he, it's like he fights. He, he fights aggressive. Yeah, what's his history? Was he not like an NHL He was player? an NFL, yeah, he was drafted. He was drafted, ah, but he went, really actually, he chose to, to fight, right? Ah, right, so, so he, was, he was drafted and then chose to switch to the UFC. Yeah, and his, um, his family too, I believe like his dad, his brother or something, he, he has a very athletic family, all with, you know, it's like, um, who's, the, who's the guy that just retired now? The, uh, the Triple C. Cejudo uh, with the Olympics. Yeah, Cejudo. He's, he's got a family of, of competitors. Like so, John Jones. Like John Jones, yeah, like John Jones. So that, that's an, it's interesting to get him a title shot. I definitely believe he deserves it. Blakovic, I don't like. I don't know enough about him to know whether I mean, or not. I mean, the last three people that he fought were Corey Anderson, Jakari Souza. Jakari Souza, yeah. He's, yeah. A guy, he's, a, he's a beast. And then before that, he beat Luke Rockhold. Luke Rock, Rockhold, that's. Luke Rockhold decided to come back for a little bit. Yeah. No one gave a shit. Nobody cares about Luke Rockhold. Nah, he's a bitch. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, Negative bitch. <laughs> it's ever since he lost the fucking. What was his name? Uh, who's the fucking British guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah Mike, from Bisping. But Bisping, yeah, Michael, when he fought Bisping, mm. and he took the loss so fucking badly. Yeah, he, he didn't did, let he, it go. Nah, he's a fucking ass. But so the, these two fights alone make the card, right? Yeah, to be honest, for a fight island card, it's not the same as we had last time. The top to bottom, fucking fantastic fights. The, the, this this weekend's card is all about the top two fights. That's right. The rest of it, there's some stuff to talk about. There's a lot of New Zealand guys. There's a guy called Kai France. Kai France. Who's, uh, he's from the same gym as Adesanya. City kickboxing. What's his weight class? Ah, uh, fuck knows. If it's Kai, isn't that the guy that fought in Shenzhen? What, the US Against team? Mark De La Rosa. Is it? Yeah, Kai. Yeah, yeah right, yeah, yeah, It's Kai, right? Kai, yeah. He's from New Zealand? Yeah. So he came, yeah, he came to Shenzhen, he fought yeah. against Mark De La Rosa. Yeah, he won. Right, yeah. He's a phenomenal fight, he'll he, win that one. He's from, the, he's from the same same gym as Adesanya and Volkanovski. Yes, that's right, yes, I know. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, okay, so Kai's coming, fantastic. So he's fighting this weekend as well. Oh, yeah, third from the top, I think. So funny, I remember when he came to, to Shenzhen, because I, I, you know, Mark, he, he, he trained here. here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we spent more, I spent more time with Mark De La Rosa, right? So I was like, oh, Kai, I can't, you know, you, your camp's over there. I'm with the, I'm remember, with the De La Rosa camp. I remember that, yeah, and then Mark lost and you were like, fucking see you Yeah, yeah, right, dude, <laughs> yeah. But then remember, I remember we were walking to like the brew yeah. and um, we were like walking to the brew after the fight and he was there and his whole camp was there. Kai. Yeah, yeah, Kai. And I was like, oh, hi, yeah, good fight, good fight, yeah. yeah. That's like, can, yeah. Can I get my, can I get my podcast? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should have been, uh, been more nicer to him, yeah. Did you hear Bisping that night? 
Biz, talk, talking about Bisping, but did you hear about him that night? Apparently, he got mugged. I heard, yeah, yeah. and that he was like, someone tried to steal my watch or something, uh, and it was like, no, Shenzhen, nobody tries to steal watches or steal. Or, we've been here for 10, 15 years each. Never happens. And I've never heard of anybody Impossible. ever having any aggression from anyone. Yeah. Ever. No matter where you go, you can walk any street. Yeah, so Bisping, I'm calling you out. You yeah. were drunk, you were inappropriate, you got shit. pushed away, and you were like, <laughs> someone tried to rob me. Yeah. No, that doesn't, that's not how it works. Full of shit, man. <laughs> never, never, never happened. Dude, I saw Bisping fight uh, when, when Gastelum knocked him out in Shanghai. I went out to a club uh, and he showed up there. And I told you, I, I, bumped, I bashed into him like because we were both like, because you know these little tight clubs and it's all dark and it's these red lights and it's like, you're, you know, it's, it's all underground. You tried to mug and watch. he was, yeah, <laughs> I wonder if he again tried to rob me. Yeah. But I remember I, I hit into him and I looked over and I was like, and I grabbed him by his shoulders like this and I was like, Mike. I was like so starstruck. And he was like, oh, and he, and, he, and he left, he left the club. But yeah, he probably went and told everyone that I mugged him. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Anyway, Bisping, you need to control your drinking habits when you're out, 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 of, uh, you're out of America. Yeah. Set a control, man. <laughs> right, so running through the rest of Fight Island. So the rest of Fight Island, what's coming next? After two, five, three, we've, we've got, got Holy Home. Yeah, remember the fight that was supposed to happen three weeks ago? They got canceled because one of them got COVID. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. been postponed now to Fight Island second week. All right. Now, Dana White, I wasn't that keen on this fight at the beginning, but Dana White's trying to big it up saying that if Aldana wins, she can get a shot on Nunes. Hmm, okay. That seems a bit fucking steep. Okay. But Ho Holly Holm is always a good fight, though. She always gives it stick. Yeah, yeah, to be honest, I mean, like, she's, she's always been solid. She's always been top one, top two, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But uh, now I'm looking forward to it. It should be a good fight. So the fight after that. We've got Marias versus Sanhagen. Remember Peter Yan at the last fight Yan took over the Bantamweight division? Mm, yeah, Peter yeah, Yan, yeah. beast of a fucking he's Russian, isn't he? Peter Yan, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A, so he he now has the belt. He has the belt. He has he's the, the belt, yeah. So he's the belt so now. So you've got guys like uh, like Maria Sanhagen, um, Cody Garbrandt, and things like that. Mm. They're all going to fight about who fights Peter Yan next. That's right. So this fight's the beginning of that chapter. Okay. So it's ranked number one contender Marias against ranked number four Sanhagen. Okay, number one against number four. So you're guessing that whoever wins this fight with a good performance gets the next shot at Peter Young. Gets at Peter Young. Yeah, and that was when Cejudo basically vacated the belt, and that was another situation where it was just up for grabs, yeah, I right? Try, I was trying to remember this today, actually. So Cejudo vacated the belt, Peter Yan fought Aldo? Was it Aldo? Yes, it was Aldo. 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 One fight Island, yeah? Yeah, and Aldo, he, ooh, he hurt him. He yeah. really. We were all rooting for Aldo, remember? We all it's wanted him, because he's a legend, right? He's like, he's, it's it's like come on, give him one more not chance. It's just that, it's just that I hate seeing him lose. It's really fucking sad. Man. Yeah. Yeah, but he really didn't do well. He was coming in, he was trying to swing. Right. Aldo, Peter Yan would go Aldo, out Aldo and then bop, bop, bop. Aldo was back getting fucked. He didn't yeah. stop the fight, yeah. yeah. Aldo was bloodied up to fuck. And yes. Yan just kept fucking. I think Yan got tired, took a breath, and then kept fucking. Kept hitting, hitting him, him. yeah. Right, so yeah. Peter Yan is, yeah, he is he's, the champion. He's, and he's never lost, I don't think. Can yeah. I you should check out Peter Yan's Instagram. He's like, the belt, because he's like from Russia, right? There, he's like all over Russia t carrying his belt. Like every kind of photo opportunity you can imagine in Russia with the belt. He's like in, at, in front of a Russian restaurant with all these big Russian boys. Then he's over here in front of a car dealership with his belt. Like, he's, he's, you know, he's having dinner with the belt. Though. Yeah, you can imagine all his friends in Russia like, hey, hey, come, come, you know, you're my guest, you know, bring the belt. <laughs> did, you, did you see when Pavetkin arrived back in Russia? Yes. After the they all dressed like, up. They yeah. Got, they got like a cape and shit, didn't they? Yeah. They got like a, like, got like a dictator's cape. They're so nice to their, their, their fighters, aren't they? I mean, in the U.S., when these guys come back, nobody's, nobody's waiting for them at the airport, you know? In no Russia, they're like, yeah, that's our boy. No, no one's giving Dion to where we got a fucking cake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Anyway, the... Oh, this one's good. The, the, the Korean zombie versus Ortega. Ortega, yeah. Ortega, what's his situation? Why has he been out of action for so long? Why um, is he... I don't know. I, there was, he fought Max Holloway, which feels like Years ages ago. ago. Ages feels like ago. so long. How do um, these guys, how do these, like, these guys are still... I mean, he's still ranked number two contender. Okay. So, Volkanovski's got the title now. Uh, I believe Max Holloway's still ranked first. And whenever we see what's going to happen with those two, I personally don't want to see the rematch again. Mm -hmm. I don't think... We don't know how much to see Volkanovski Holloway again. Not again, no, no. So, Ortega, Korean Zombie, they've got some fucking history. Um, should be a good fight. If Ortega can come back after that beating from Holloway, then it should be a good fight. Should be good. Do you, for a little fun fact you told me earlier that actually the Korean Zombie's name is the Korean Zombie. On like, the UFC website, it says the Korean Zombie. Is the Korean Zombie. You don't actually know his name. Yeah. Do, you know how, do, you know, do you know how he got that? How did he, how did he get that? Just in, being in the gym. They said that when he first arrived, no one knew who he was. 
and he never got tired. He kept trying to fight everyone. He would never stop. He never, He'd never to, stop. He never took a rest. He was the first one there, last one to leave. They got him so a zombie. He was a true zombie. Yeah. Here's another another challenge for all you viewers. Try to find out what the Korean zombie's actual name is and post it in the comments. I'd be curious what his actual oh. name was. I'll look up today. Yeah. <laughs> the Korean zombie. Hi, I'm the Korean zombie. All right, and 254 is next with Khabib versus Giche. Oh my God, what an event. Yeah. This is it. This is the event of the year. This is the biggest UFC fight of 2020. It's either this weekend or Giche, Khabib, for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, there's so much history with this one. The Ferguson fight falling through with Khabib because hmm. uh, of the COVID stuff in Russia. That's right. And then Ferguson fighting Gaethje in that brutal war. Uh, remember that one? Was that March? Yes, yes, and all the striking, the, war, the striking. Was doing. This is the fight everyone's wanted to see. Who'd, it was the one the fans wanted. This is what they really they they were like, Khabib please. Ferguson. They wanted Khabib Ferguson, yeah. exactly. And then Khabib, he trained for and trained, and then he didn't get a chance. And then he, with that loss against Giche, everyone was like, Okay, this, the, these three, these are the three guys, right? These, yeah. I mean, Connor arguably is, is in there in some well, way. Well, I don't think we can talk about Connor because he's not fought that, that long, but you've got guys like Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier, yep. But he's also got choked out to Khabib. He did beat Gaethje, though. Did beat Gaethje, yes. But I mean, that's like UFC master. Never but what, what, I mean, for this final fight, honestly, I think Khabib's, Khabib is the champion. The compete. Khabib, I don't, I don't see many people giving Giche a chance. And I myself, I, I don't think. I don't Giche. think so. It's, it's, what I was thinking about was Khabib's fought Connor. Mm -hmm. Connor is a better striker than Gaethje. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What we wanted to see is Gaethje and Connor. That would be an interesting fight. Yeah, Gaethje, Ferguson needs Connor, his chance. Connor and Ferguson at their best. Connor, yeah, yeah. At their best. Connor at his best against Ferguson at his best would be incredible. Would be, a, would be and very good. And then Gaethje, good. Connor just for the fucking build up. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Khabib, but Khabib, Khabib's fought Connor, who's a better striker. He's also fought Poirier. Mm -hmm. Poirier is a better striker than Gaethje. Poirier beat Gaethje. And yeah. Khabib took them down and choked them out like it was nothing. Yeah. So Gaethje, he, he said it himself to be honest, Gaethje's got violence, the extreme violence. And if he runs in fast, overwhelms Khabib. That's right. And then, I don't know, maybe we'll see what happens, but Khabib's gonna, this is a home fight for him. Like in Abu Dhabi, it's such a big support. That's right, it, it yeah, make, he's make, the star. He's the money. He's yeah. literally, he's probably in the UFC, in UFC uh, when we're looking at stars. I mean, yeah, Israel Asani, it'd be interesting to see what the yeah. pay-per-view is gonna do. But, uh, Khabib's, but Khabib's, Khabib's, Khabib's the next Khabib's, big guy. Khabib's a global star. He's a global he's star, like yeah. Ru Ru Russia and the Middle East, he's like superstar level, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so that's, I, that's where, where UFC's gonna get a massive payday. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, him fighting in Abu Dhabi, He's not going to lose that to a guy, a guy like Gaethje. Wow! And imagine that he hold, he he takes that fight. Do you, do you know what I want? Do you know what I actually want to have? I, I, I like Justin, Justin Gaethje, and I hope he does fight. I guess, but I just hope Ferguson's fit and in Dubai, and yeah. then Gaethje gets COVID. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> And Gage, then there's a quick swap around. Gaethje out, Ferguson swoops right into the fight on the fight night. Yes. The place goes dark and then fucking one spotlight and Ferguson just walks in. Yes, room. and Ferguson's like, oh, he's like, I'm always ready. Yeah. You know, as, as he always is, right? Oh, McGregor and Ferguson are there. They both fight to who gets to fight Khabib in the same night. Yeah. I, I honestly don't think uh, Connor will fight until like late next year. Dana I think White, Connor Dana, Dana doesn't. said this week that he's been speaking to Connor and they're working on something fun. Okay. okay. Yeah, because I kind of see him doing. You know. I, okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll touch on a little bit of boxing before we before we have to go. But um, with with Floyd Mayweather and um, and Logan Paul, you know these sorts of matchups that are all me that pe still the talking media about stuff. That, I know you said it was bullshit. Yeah. But they're still talking about it. I think that's what Connor wants. Connor wants some kind of like, oh, give me an, an expo fight. I want to go down the Floyd Mayweather that, route. That's the perfect example of what Connor and Floyd done to boxing. Yeah. But boxing now. It's not a competition, it's not a sport, it's like a... It's what, media, it's, a, what, it's, what a, is it's an event, called? yeah. Eddie Hunt calls it every single event as a, like, going at a business sale. It's how much money can we grab from right now, this tonight, this is the biggest event, we need to do this right now. Yeah, that's right. They take it and run, and then they figure it out again. They're, they're not <laughs> building the brand, they're not building a sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, they're not, and the worst part of it is these boxers that have been building their record and trying to get a chance at the big time are now all, like, pushed further and further down. The worst, that, worst example, did you read the story with Canelo Alvarez? Canelo Alvarez is that. He, he's like the Mexican guy. The is, he's suing, run. right? He's, he's suing the zone because yes. he signed that huge money deal with the zone. They got Golovkin on the same um, company. Uh -huh. And the plan was, I guess, to do the third trilogy fight. Turns out they still haven't managed to find a fight for him. 
Okay. He sued the zone for breach of contract. And the zone said that they've been working on fights and the three fights that they wanted, the only three fights that were entertained, um, was the Golovkin third fight. Yeah, obviously obviously Triple G. Triple yeah. G. And then Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal. Or, <laughs> Jorge Masvidal against Canelo Alvarez. Yeah, oh, so, so it was another UFC fight. I can't remember who it was. But Alvarez is like, this is a fucking joke. Can't I don't, yeah, you don't want to find big guys, big profile boys, big media stars. I yeah, want to find real boxers. I want to fight boxers and build up his record and he takes his legacy very seriously. Yeah. And it, just, it just shows what boxing's become that the zone signed the biggest fight in the world, the biggest boxer in the world right now, Canelo Alvarez. And they were more interested in setting him up with guys like Jorge Masvidal. That's in, insane. Jorge Masvidal, wow. See, that guy has done very well for himself to be able to Masvidal. be in that position, to, get, he, the, to actually get a chance. Not, 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 it wasn't actually any substance, it was just his own his fucking whiteboard in their office. Jorge Masvidal was never contacted. Dana White said it was a joke that they thought they could get a fight with Jorge Masvidal. And he just said it just shows what a disgrace boxing's become and how desperate they are. They're it, desperate to get it. It's, yeah. just, it's just a quick cash grab. It's not how can we build Canelo's brand and box him back up. That's it's terrible. Just get him in with Jorge, let's get the fucking money and go. Yeah, yeah. Can you, can you imagine Canelo Alvarez fighting Jorge Masvidal? He'd fucking destroy He'd him. He'd destroy him. Yeah, and it just shows like all the promoters, all the managers, they all just want they all just want big pay. Right now, want it now, tonight. Yeah. There's, 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 there's no next month, there's no next year, there's no bringing the guys up from the bottom, there's nothing like that. It's yeah. Just, how can we get them? most money now put Logan Paul can you get him with Floyd Mayweather Logan Let's Paul against Floyd Mayweather is a, is a disaster ta, 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 that's I, a I disaster know, I know we're all looking forward to it Mike Tyson against Roy Jones Jr yeah yeah that, that's the for, for example they sum the whole thing up Lomachenko is fighting Lopez in what four weeks yep that's right how many people are talking about nobody's that? talking about that, that's, that they're too elite also Usyk fight. is fighting again nobody's Usyk talking about it well, just got announced just got no, announced no one's talking about that Lomachenko Lopez are two of the highest level fighters you'll find in the world right now that's right and we've been waiting for them for at least two years to fight no one's giving a shit about nobody's that. talking about everyone's up but if you mention uh, Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. Yep, people know. Everyone's fucking talking about it. Everyone knows about it. It just shows. And, and fucking Floyd Mayweather versus Logan, Logan Paul. Paul. Yeah, it's a joke, man. Logan but Paul you... is what? One pro fight? And he lost it. <laughs> oh, no, no. He had KSI was two. But the guy's another YouTuber. Yeah, but that makes he, no sense. Did he win any of those fights? I didn't even watch he, them. He lost, uh, he lost both. Yeah. Did you watch them? I think the first one was a draw. I can't remember. I, I didn't actually watch the fight. I, it, was I don't watch it, it gets boring. But yeah, I mean, that's something you've got all, all that stuff going on in boxing. I'm looking forward to Mike Tyson, but if that's the biggest event for the rest of the year for the boxing calendar, it's a bit of a joke. It's a bit of a joke. And but we have Lomachenko. That's October, what, 28? 24, 28. 24. Something like that, yeah. If, if any of you guys don't know, Lomachenko versus Lopez, go and look it up right now. They're that the might, that is the, arguably the greatest fight, gr greatest the boxing year. fight yeah. of the year. And then the next is Usyk, just got, just got announced within the last 24 hours. If, I we're, saw. if we're going to get into this, it's going to get pretty deep. Pretty yes. Bad. Okay, guys, so we probably got, should cut it there. <laughs> we're going to take a, we're gonna take a, uh, a break. And uh, next week, Monday, Roy's yeah. going to get back in the ring and we're going to talk strictly about boxing. Yeah, it's been cool. awesome. UFC 253 is coming this weekend. We are pumped. We're excited. Israel Asanya versus Costa. Wow, this is a big fight. We'll see you guys next time.